software for the 3D printing of the Generation 4 electronics. I will cover the installation of Replicator G. I will also cover um, installing the driver and the firmware that is used for machine specific um, items or specifications such as the steps per inch or steps per millimeter, um, the X, Y, Z axes um, specifications, the direction of the axes, and the speed at which the axes will move. First we need to download the program and you can either go to uh, Google and just look it up, Replicator G. And the first thing we'll, that you'll see here is uh, replicate.org, which is the same place you would need to go if you typed it into the address bar. So you can just click that link. We are specifically interested in the download. So um, under the main, just click on download. And in this tutorial, I'm going to be going over the Windows installation. So click on Windows. And you'll see that it's downloading. Okay, the download is complete. Make sure to note where the location of your uh, zip file went. Um, you can just use the show and folder if you're using Google Chrome, and it'll be located here. Make sure you, you know um, that location. Replicator G also requires Java to be installed on your computer, and you can just go to the java.com forward slash en to download the latest um, Java. You will also need the uh, Python programming language to, to be able to use a program called Skyforge, which takes the 3D model and converts it into G-code. To download the latest Python, just type in the address bar, python.org, and on that page you'll see Download Python Now. Just click that and you can get the latest Python and use the Windows installer or whatever um, operating system you're going to be using. This is a automatic installation, so when you run this file, it will start installing the Python immediately. And the final item you'll be uh, downloading is a file to be used as a configuration for Replicator G, and it contains uh, the specific um, information to provide movement for your machine. You can go to uh, the site Build Your CNC just by um, using Google and just typing Build Your CNC. Click on the first link and go to CNC machines, white ant 3D printer slash CNC. And right now at this time the, uh, the page is being constructed, but I have the resources for the configura configuration file located on that page. You'll want to right click on that file and press save link as, and you can call it, um, use the default name, it says whiteant.xml and save. The XML file, if you're not familiar with XML, it's simply a text file that is uh, organized in a way that um, it's easy to read the, uh, the data within this text file. This is the actual file. This is the actual file, um, the Wideant XML file. And you can see that it has the name and it's very clearly marked using uh, tags called name. Um, and then it goes into the geometry type Cartesian and it has the information for each axis, X, Y, and Z and it has the length in millimeters, the feed rates in millimeters, uh, the steps per millimeter um, number which is calculated from uh, the, the specific pulley that you're using and the specific um, pitch from the pulley and uh, the Z specifically is using a lead screw so that's, uh, that has a different steps per millimeter number um, and the A axis is the, the extruder uh, stepping motor and that has a length of whatever and the max feed rate of 1600 and the steps per millimeter is 50 and this will these are the numbers that are that will um, allow you to have the, the correct amount of PLA extruded and when you have uh, then you have a an area for the tools and this particular tool is a step extruder it's um, this is the specific name that's required for the extruder that uses a stepping motor and this is the, um, the main wide end um, configuration. You can also have various uh, other types of configuration. Um, and this particular one is with the heated build platform. And then it has some extra information regarding heated build, pl build, regarding heated build platform um, in the code, in the configuration. This 
this particular file will be located or this particular file will need to be copied into the machi machine subfolder of replicator G and we'll go through that in a little bit. We'll go through that later. We will go through that in the next step when we install the replicator G software. Now we need to establish communication between the computer and the machine. To do this simply plug in the USB cable from your computer into the USB um, connector on the motherboard. You will see a similar window like the one shown here. Windows Vista and Windows 7 will automatically um, install the drivers when, this, when the motherboard is plugged in. However, if you have Windows XP, you'll need to follow the instructions on the Arduino site for the Arduino Mega. When the driver has been established, you'll notice that a COM port will be assigned to the, uh, to the device. Write down this number because you'll need it when uh, you connect to the machine with Replicator G. Now we are ready to install the Replicator G uh, program. All you need to do is extract the, the file and it will work as a standalone program with uh, supportive, uh, supporting files. Um, I've created a uh, folder called 3D Printer Software and I'm just going to drag it into that. This program can generally lie um, anywhere on the computer. Uh, just as long as you know where it's located, you'll be able to find the, find the program. Now we will need to take the whiteant.xml file and copy it into the replicator G um, subfolder of machines. Now we can go ahead and run the program. Just open the folder that you put replicator G in and open up its main folder and double click on replicator G.exe. The main user interface for replicator G will open up. You'll need to select the machine that we'll be using. Go to machine driver and select white ant. Now we need to tell Replicator G what COM port the device can be found and this is the COM port that we wrote down which is COM port 9. The COM port that's configured on your machine is most likely different. Now we can attempt to establish a connection with the machine. Just press the connect button. You will see the space just below the buttons turn green and it will tell you that it's ready. Now that the connection is established, we can um, upload the firmware to the motherboard. Go to Machine and click Upload New Firmware. You'll see a new dialog box containing a selection for the type of electronics that you have. Since we have the USB connected to the motherboard and we have Gen 4 electronics, select the motherboard with Gen 4 and then press Next. You'll be given a choice for which version to use. You can select the latest version unless that version has a has a bug or an error in it. Select the appropriate COM port, in this case it's COM9. And now it's time to upload. This part is a bit tricky. Um, I found that if you click the upload, after you click the reset button, it will um, it'll have a less chance of working. But if you hold down the reset button and then click the upload and then release the reset button, it seemed to work uh, and the upload was successful. If you are unsuccessful, this is the message that will appear. And this is a message for a successful upload. Now the extruder controller needs to be updated with firmware. You'll need to unplug the USB cable from the motherboard and connect it into the extruder controller. As with the motherboard, click on machine and upload new firmware. And select the extruder controller, Gen 4. Press next. 
and select the latest version. Click Next and COM10 is the COM port that appeared as a new port so it must be COM10. COM10 was established in the background while Windows was installing the driver for the extruder controller as the USB was plugged into the into the controller. This process is a bit simpler as you only need to click the upload button and you do not need to press a reset button on the actual controller so the firmware will be succeeded. Now the USB plug needs to be removed from the extruder controller and put back into the motherboard. Press the connect button to establish a connection to the machine. Now we can start to control the machine. To do this, go to machine and control panel. A new window will appear with a user interface that provides uh, many controls for the machine for jogging and for um, establishing a temperature for the, the extruder. You first want to make sure that the motor speed RPM is set at 1.98. You'll also notice that the current temperature is 26 degrees Celsius, which is about room temperature. We're going to increase that to, we're going to increase the target temperature to um, 100. And we're going to watch, we're going to watch the current temperature rise uh, to achieve the target temperature. This may take a few minutes. This is a long running process, so I'm going to speed the video up during this time. We have successfully achieved 100 degrees centigrade. Now we can establish a higher temperature of what would melt the PLA and we're going to put in 205. We have reached the temperature of 205 and we know that the extruder is functioning properly. Insert some PLA into the extruder and um, try to extrude by pressing the forward button and determine what type of uh, string of plastic you get out of the nozzle. Uh, determine the consi uh, if it's a good consistency, uh, not too runny, then um, it is 205 is the appropriate temperature. If it is um, too runny then lower the temperature, if it's too stiff then increase the temperature.